I don't care about how this pay-per-view does. I don't care how much money I make. I don't care about interviews, and I don't care how I look. All I care about is winning my belt back on Friday night, and that's it. If you took the roster of the UFC's uh, bantamweights, 135 pounds, and you paired them up against Ronda Rousey, she might be able to beat 50% of them. And, that, and that's not a joke. There's a lot of guys her size she could beat. I mean, a lot. <laughs> Rousey, 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 do the Ronda, Rousey, 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 Rousey, Rousey. Rousey, do the Ronda Rousey. I think it's a little un unfair. I feel like Dana White has punished people for not going to the media. Cancel fights. Cancel fights. P taking Nick Diaz out of big fights and, and taking other people out of big fights. Uh, Conor McGregor out of big fights uh, for that reason. So, I mean, it's just a little hypocritical, but... Yeah, no, I think it's very hypocritical. And, you know, I think... It is a double standard. I know that Ronda brings a lot of eyeballs that right, those right. people don't, or most people don't. Gregor and Nick Diaz do, but maybe you know you're not going to see them on Ellen anytime soon. So. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> she's very, she's a very sensitive person, and she takes everything personal. Fake sweet app is, I see right through it. I really do. It was all fake. You being sweet, I see you right now that it's fake, and you're gonna get it on Sunday. You're not the first person I thought that you had the perfect plan to beat me. It's not the first time your pants thought that they had the perfect plan to beat me. I'm gonna show you on Sunday why I'm the champ. Rhonda going into the fight with Holly Hall, she was overconfident. She was almost disrespectful. You know, no one could be champion as well as me, and and just her arrogance was it was it was it was, it was kind of disgusting. You know, and, and, I, and I think those are the words that kind of ate at her when she lost because everyone brought it up. And she's, and now I think she's to the point where she's like, you know what, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to give you a sound bite to hang me with afterwards if I don't win this fight. And, she, you know, she, she took it really personal when the same media sources that wrote really well about her when she did good didn't do so when she lost. And, and she took that really, really personal. So she's she's now to the point where she's like i'm not talking to anybody i'm done with the media and she's and she's really hard on the media but the media is just doing what they do and it's just that you know they cover and they, and they get the story that the people want to hear and sometimes you're the hammer sometimes you're the nail you got to be willing to to take it and, and that's just and that's just the reality of of the sport that's just the reality of the sport it's the reality of any sport you know what i'm saying like any sport you know where, where you step into the spotlight to uh, to have a great performance, you also got to understand you may not have a great performance, and you got to understand that you may be uh, being criticized for what you did do or what you could have done or whatever. Um, as far as pay per view buys, that's that's a tough one. I mean, uh, I think that Rousey not talking is going to hurt. I still think it'll do well, but I don't think it'll be over over a million buys. Uh, what's your ballpark here? Where are you thinking it's actually going to fall? Uh, I would say somewhere uh, in between six hundred and eight hundred thousand. That's just uh, that's it. That's just really a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I could, I At what point does it become a failure? At what point do you think, hey, you know what? This really, really was the wrong way to go about promoting Ronda Rousey's return, which Dana White had said would be the biggest fight in UFC history. I, I think I think that they were willing, or at least Dana White was willing, and probably WME was willing because Ronda Rousey is one of their clients. I think that they were willing to kind of take this one on the chin to, to appease her and, and hopefully give her the best opportunity to win the fight and come back for a rematch with Holly Holm or, or some kind of big fight that's going to draw more money in the future. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be, it's certainly, I mean, Dana White was saying this is going to be the biggest fight, um, you know, Rousey Turner was going to be the biggest fight in UFC history. It's definitely not that. It's not even going to be, I mean, it may be with the McGregor fight, it may be the fourth biggest fight of just this year alone. She 
just, was this all fraudulent? Was this make-believe? Was, was who she was a byproduct of what people wished she the, was as the, opposed to what she really is? The media created this sensation of, this is a fantastic athlete, two-time Olympian, brought of a medal course, home for this. Of course, different discipline. Absolutely, totally fantastic. What the media had done, and to put her, uh, you know, the greatest athlete of all time, and, you know, the uh, once-in-a-lifetime, I'm sitting back looking at her, I'm going, look, in fairness, and again, this is a personal friend, but in fairness, the sport of judo, which she came from, has zero success in MMA. She is the one and only that's ever succeeded, ever had a title, ever made it to a title fight, ever made it to contention to get into a title fight. It is not an effective art for mixed martial arts. So I'm looking at the skill set. I'm going, look, this is tough to buy. I'm looking at what the media is saying. I'm going, we've got a, a real marketing gem here. Let's ride this horse into the ground. I think that it's time to mix it up. And, and listen, it's really nice to hear what people say about you. It's really nice to read those things. It's a big problem when you start to believe it. I think Edmund is a terrible coach. Cut ready for me. Travis, first with the jab, jab, chest, jab, and then you can do whatever you want. And I will say it publicly. I think he's a terrible coach. I think he hit the lottery when Grinder walked in there. Leave it to yourself, brother. Last round, you win, it's yours. She would probably won 99% of the judo matches she ever fought in. <laughs> Somebody like that is a terrible coach. I don't give a fuck your head. Fuck this motherfucker up, he's good. I would caution anybody from going there. All she wants to do is catch you with that left hand and Tom come on top with that hook, okay? He's a bad person and people should not go there. After and, and and hung out with her for probably 40, 45 minutes, and uh, you know, I'll tell you this: she's in better spirits this time than she was after the Holly fight. You know, um, she's very competitive. She 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 does not like to lose. She loves to win, and uh, she loves to do what she sets out to do. You know, tonight wasn't her night. You think we see her fight again, or is this the last time we see her in the octagon? I don't know. You know, Ronda obviously needs to go home, take some time. She's very rich. She doesn't need to fight anymore. You know, we always like to use that term, once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime does not apply to Ronda Rousey. It's once ever in human history. There's never been a woman like her. Her ability to not just beat great fighters, but destroy them. She's like a superhero. I mean, she really is a freak of existence. When Ronda Rousey leaves the sport, you may never see someone like her again. Not just in mixed martial arts, but in any sport.